Hello, my name's Jonathan. Thanks for joining me here at the Queensland Museum today. Have you ever uh, wondered about the rocks that are under our feet? Or maybe imagined a huge volcanic eruption in your neighbourhood? Or possibly even thought about whether you might find a dinosaur bone in your backyard? Well today, together, we're going to explore the rocks around us and look at some of the stories they tell us about how our world has changed over vast expanses of time. Now, the best thing about this is you don't need a rock hammer and a sturdy pair of boots to do this. You can do it from your own home, even from the comfort of your own couch. All you're going to need is a computer or a tablet or a smartphone and an internet connection. And if you're seeing me now, you've probably already got those things. So we're going to be using a free online tool. It's called Macrostrat. And this has geological maps of pretty much anywhere in the world, actually. Now, geological maps can be a little bit daunting if you're not familiar with them. So I'm going to talk you all through how it works. Now, we'll start by looking at where we're at. Now, I'm here in Brisbane, so I'm going to zoom in on Brisbane and have a look there. So the first thing you'll notice when you see one of these maps is there's a whole lot of colours covering the landscape there. Now, those colours are actually the rocks that are under that landscape. Uh, you can see that there's a whole lot of different colours. Now, the colours do actually have some meaning. They actually tell us something about how old those rocks are. And remember, of course, the Earth is very old, so we can have lots of different ages here covering a huge expanse of time. Um, let's just click on one of these though to get some information about it just as an example. So there's a big purple blob here near Brisbane. If I click on that, it tells me that this is the Inogra granite. So this is a, a rock that formed deep inside a volcano and it tells me the age too during the Triassic period over 250 million years ago. So when you're seeing the ages it mentions for these rocks, uh, sometimes there'll be time periods that you might have heard of. You might have heard of, say, the Jurassic period, for example, or you might not. But hopefully this tells us a rough chronological age in number of millions of years before present. It says that uh, it's a little MA mentioned on there. That stands for mega annum, so that's millions of years. You also see some information about these rock units listed under lithology and description. So here it tells us that it's an igneous felsic intrusive rock. Now that sounds like a lot of gobbledygook to most people. So we'll explain a little bit about what that means by going back to Geology 101. So there are three major types of rocks. There's sedimentary, igneous and metamorphic rocks. We're going to look at these in turn. So sedimentary rocks, these are made of sediments. These are things like sand and clay and gravel and silt and such. So rocks like sandstone, limestone, uh, siltstone, shale, rocks like that. These are the rocks you find fossils in. The next group of rocks are the igneous rocks. Now igneous rocks, popularly th thinking as we, they come from volcanoes, of course. Now that's not technically always correct, but these are rocks that solidify and crystallize from molten rock. So either lava or magma. Lava is molten rock on the surface or close to it. Magma is rock which is molten deep underneath the surface. So some examples of um, igneous rocks are things like basalts, obsidian, granite, um, rhyolite, things like that. Finally are the metamorphic rocks. Now metamorphic rocks, they sort of began life as a sedimentary or an igneous rock but they've been altered by heat and pressure. So they've either been absolutely crushed by high pressure or they've been cooked by extreme heat. So for example, a uh, sandstone where, right next to where a volcano erupts will get cooked by the heat of that volcano. So these are metamorphic rocks. Now this isn't just a one-off process either. They can keep changing. So for example, if I had a shale, a sedimentary rock, and it was compacted, it would turn into a slate. But if that slate was further compacted, it would turn into a phyllite. And if you kept compacting and heating that rock, it would turn into a schist and then into a nice. So yeah, it can keep changing like that. But that, in summary, is the different types of rocks. So knowing some of these rock types will help us read our geological map. So let's return to where we are. So remember, I'm here at South Bank in the Queensland Museum. Let's have a look at the rocks there. So the map tells me that if we were to uh, well, from where I'm sitting, if I was to dig through several floors of the museum and through our car park, I'd eventually reach some rocks that belong to a unit called the Bunyaphilite. Now, phyllite is a metamorphic rock. These rocks would have once been uh, muds and sediments collecting off the shore, off the coast of not so much Australia back in those days, but it would have been the, off the coast of the supercontinent Gondwana, as we were part of that at the time. Now, uh, those rocks have since been uplifted and compressed and changed and altered into this rock phyllite. So, 
Rock, what rocks do you have in your area? What do they tell you about the deep history of your neighbourhood? Well, uh, you can use the map to explore, of course, find out what you can in there. But if you have any further questions about it, you're free to contact us here at the Queensland Museum. Go to our website, click on Ask an Expert, and we'll be able to answer your questions. Happy exploring! <laughs>